Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Digby. 3 o'clock location, we have Orphan as the Purple Terran. 9 o'clock location, we have Ziddy as the Blue Protoss. Both these guys met at the UCSD Winter Games Fest, which was played in LAN-like conditions. Obviously, you can't have LAN in StarCraft II currently, but 128 guys piled into the East Ballroom at UCSD, right above Price Center, and it was a blast. It, I think things ran rather well, all things considered. The loser's bracket did have to go to single elimination, unfortunately, but we had a really strong showing in the finals. I've got to say that's what the Justin TV broadcast was yesterday, and sorry about the bad quality. That was, that there's nothing I can really do about that. Uh, live stream tends not to be the highest capture uh, sort of thing, and when you transfer to YouTube, particularly when you're trying to transfer to YouTube HD, it tends to get a lot of that uh, pa uh, pixelation macro blocking. So, yes, bad quality there, but it was a one-time event, it was done live, and I don't think I can really recreate that for you. So it uploaded their you can skip that commentary and watch this one instead if you really demand the high quality visual stuff anyway both these guys again masters league i'm not sure what stage of the bracket this is at i probably should have looked at that ahead of time but i know it is deep into the bracket um, again these guys piled in and survived uh, which honestly maybe even be more harrowing than the rest of the competition a lot of lag a lot of issues a, a big huge i mean there was a lot of games played it was a marathon i think they started somewhere around 11 and it finished off somewhere near 10 so about 11 hours of starcraft play altogether. looks like we're seeing a barracks supply depot opening here from orphan and granted this is not the finals but i still wanted to have some replays out of the winter games fest nevertheless at least in high quality for some people. Uh, looks like we do have a pile into the corner for Ziddy, and I like that just to get some informational coverage. Is grabbing his initial gas and just going gateway first. And I also will be doing the Brood War finals here in the near future uh, as soon as I figure out some color issues with Brood War, which have cropped up out of nowhere. Which, in the finals in that sector, were fantastic. I wish I could have live cast them. We unfortunately we did not have time. Really, really good matches. Look for those in the near future for all the people like, oh, you're never to Brood War anymore. I will do Brood War from the UCSD Winter Games Fest, and the the matches were awesome, absolutely incredible. And also speaking of finals, GSL finals, OSL finals this Friday. Uh, again, sign up to the post at Team Liquid. There's the announcement back there. Second gas for Ziddy. It looks like he is planning on pushing tech. Uh, he's already got that cybernetic score building, has produced any, uh, an initial zealot, and it looks like a marine is starting to chase down that initial probe that's hanging out in the base. Actually, two marines um, right off the bat, and there's a refinery, and this is a very defensive kind of setup here. You've got that barracks hugging the command center. Also a refinery. It looks like it's going to be one racks into expansion, built way away from any where any scout would be able to kind of sneak it north and might actually want to put uh, those uh, those marines a little bit closer to the ramp to engage any sort of additional scout that might come out. Uh, Orphan in the meantime has his SCV running around to the base, still hasn't spotted that second gas and that's actually going to be critical to know whether he's going up against a fast expansion build or whether he's going up against a tech build and granted you can still go um, you can still go uh, fast expansion, it kind of slows it down, loses that SCV in the meantime, it still slows it down but you at least know that there's the opportunity for early robo, um, speak of the devil, robo uh, robotics facility there by Ziddy, I should up the production tab. Also getting an initial uh, sentry out in the field and getting warp gates uh, as well. It looks like he has let a little bit of chrono boost build up. In the meantime, I like this build from Orphan and I've seen a little bit of adjustments on it and I, basically quite rice I've seen execute a build like this where he more or less went four barracks first and started pumping out marines. This is more or less the same thing but with one less barracks uh, which almost leads me to believe that Orphan in the later stages is thinking about doing a faster tech switch. Um, so more or less what you can do is you're pumping out the same number of marines as you would be out of four barracks because of that reactor and on top of that you've got that command center you know floating out there so you have a ton of room to protect that natural expansion against tier well theoretical tier one units for uh, your protoss opponent and that's why that again scouting that gas was so important robotics bay to start for ziddy and this is almost a, as pure a counter as you can get particularly if ziddy decides to press forward with a early upgrade timing attack it is possible it'll still go into kind of a protective fast expansion build not quite sure what this probe is doing hanging out here looks like another scout moving up in the field but seeing all of these marines staged towards the front door beautiful comsat actually wow nice comsat getting all the information seeing a forge seeing a robotics facility uh also or sorry uh, seeing the robotics bay and the robotics facility probes still hanging out at the front looks like they are gonna uh pull back now and it looks like we are going to see uh, a three gate robo and the forge still just sitting here maybe that was a precautionary forge but still no weapons one out of it i'm most curious what this is about and if we're gonna see some sort of cannon 
uh, support to this. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit confused by the forge, I have to admit. Looks like Robotics Bay is now upgrading thermal lances, and this is as soon as that Colossus comes out, particularly with, and unfortunately because of that forge, there's going to be less troops, but between the warp gates, the units that are going to be able to be fielded by Ziddy, um, looks like he is going to get an observer to see everything, and it looks like, yeah, factory to follow this up as well. Two, uh, two tech labs to upgrade and make those Marines even more powerful to help defend, and never mind, Orphan actually skipping his natural expansion, and I I don't think this was scouted by Ziddy at all. He's actually going to, to plant down in that bottom right hand corner. And this is really cute too. I like it. Basically Ziddy, um, without knowing any better, might be thinking nervous, bad macro more or less and uh, looking at the troops out in the field might thought uh, might be thinking oh well he, he's got upgrades that are coming faster here rather that he's got concussive shells and he's got combat shield and that's kind of making up for the the lack of troops looks like a factory also building with reactor and a starport alongside to get those medevacs out rather rapidly but instead it looks like orphan actually expanding to the bottom right this has not been scouted by ziddy at all the fact is the ziddy is not really going to be able to respond to it but he does have an army that is almost a direct counter well a little bit late and again uh, I worry about this and all of a sudden Orphan, I just feel like he's macroing better as well. It looks like 30, uh, 33 harvesters to 31 comparatively and he's definitely got a larger army. And now, oh, I almost feel like Ziddy has a little, been a undecisive mostly here. But this Colossus, at the very least, is going to absolutely guarantee a nice defensive hold position for Ziddy. He should be able to get that natural up without too much trouble and as long as he holds back actually because that expansion is in the bottom right. Um, mules, oh, this is actually smart, yeah, landing the mules back here. Uh, the, the problem with this bottom right expansion is, is you can't uh, support, really. You can't get the SCVs out there to saturate it very rapidly. But what you can do is you could just land mules out there and make it almost as effective. So, and it's a little bit more of a protected natural expansion. It's definitely, I assume, confusing Ziddy here. It's thinking, okay, he's not expanding, he's playing one base play, which is actually causing him to play a little bit more relaxed and play a, more or less a uh, different game altogether. But two Colossus on the front door, the Stalkers, the Zealot, uh, single sentry. I'd like to see some more sentries actually in this unit combination. Definitely in a situation where they can provide some support. It looks like that factory actually might even float up and land on that high ground in the meantime to provide some uh, annoyance. But Orphan, instead of going medevacs first, going Vikings first to try, to try to defend, but these two Colossi very quickly ripping through all of the Marines. Only a couple Marauders on the ground to deal with the Zealots in the meantime, just getting eaten alive. But both Colossus taken out to follow that up. Still, Orphan has no standing army. It looks, I, never mind, he has a very small standing army to follow this up. And uh, even so, I don't know that Ziddy would even feel like attacking into this, considering, okay, well, he doesn't have a natural, so what am I going to attack exactly um, so uh, looks like a factory actually coming out to scout I would have loved to see that planted up here and uh, with a tech lab alongside looks like Colossus continuing to be produced Oof, it, that and losing those two Colossi actually really really hurt let's see if there's gonna be another free hit here the stalkers the sentries out of position the zealots a little bit out of position as well trying to swing back around and again the Vikings still uh, prodding it looks like they are gonna get a spot and catch that second robotics facilities that he needs to cancel it is gonna cancel this not the best positioning there um, for that, so it looks like Orphan and Firm Control actually getting another expansion built. Let's see if he actually floats it uh, to the top left. Bring up the Harvester count. He's actually well ahead, and as a result, uh, severely economically ahead. And uh, I like these Vikings just kind of scouting the corner. It looks like they're able to take out uh, a lot of stuff. It looks like this factory still exposed in open ground. Still no second Colossus though. Looks like an Immortal actually being built to help deal uh, with the additional troops on the ground. But four Vikings out. Oof, very scary for this Colossus, particularly without a lot of Stalker support that can just suicide in. So the Stalker's turning around to try to engage. And it looks like Orphan is microing that rather well. Natural expansion, <laughs> not natural, secondary. Uh, bottom right is starting to wind up. And it looks like the, uh, yeah, now the natural is going to be taken with additional barracks and nice infrastructure to build. So Ziddy uh, pinned back a little bit here. Still has this forge, still hasn't run for him. And again, I feel like that was a little bit of a mistake earlier. It just feels like a sharper build overall for Orphan. Starting to move forward with uh, the Immortal now in that army composition. Once again, not a very large force. Also separated, but ooh, a little bit of mismanagement there. The Viking's going to hit, oh, going to be able to take out that Colossus so quickly before it's really able to be effective. And now this army is more or less naked and should retreat very very rapidly oh that immortal just so slow and do these sentries they do not have enough force field to help in this retreat one cannon on the front um, to provide a little bit of support and it looks like the threat of some additional force fields as well as reinforcements going to back orphan out but now orphan has enormous amounts of map control he's got medevacs which uh 
more or less could help support the bottom right, even if he didn't, uh, even if there was some sort of air threat from Zitties that he must be confused as far as where where the the economy is coming from. Really, um, he has his natural expansion, so it's three bases versus two. Looks like Zealot Charge of the Twilight Council also upgrading and more sentries warping in. Uh, unfortunately, well. And, well, let's see how this fight works out. It is a very vulnerable fight considering the numbers here, but engaging once again, the Vikings just sitting there incompetently going to land on the ground, perhaps provide some, some retreat, and yeah, Zidi, with overwhelming forces this time, able to force that army into a retreat. Uh, unfortunately, his own unit's getting stuck a little bit on that force field, is still attacking that factory towards the front. Ooh, Medivac retreating out to the natural. Looks like a Viking's going to regroup with their brethren and perhaps push out and attack once more and Zidi getting a little bit ambitious. He does not hold the front just yet. Oh, Marine stim pack everything attacking on the front. Let's see these Vikings land and engage in this fight as well. Looks like they're just going to hover up above for the moment but uh, the Immortals, both of them picked off only sentries and stalkers left. Looks like they're going to retreat rapidly, particularly because they do not have really the impact damage that's needed to punch through that medevac healing. So, and yeah, 12 o'clock location was kind of spotted out. Zidi can't really comfortably take that currently because, again, he does not have map control. More Vikings going to push out to scout, maybe even do some harassment back at the main because uh, not a lot of stalkers here currently. Um, also, Twilight Council is up, Charge is up, but not a lot of Zealots. Okay, just two Zealots in that composition. Vikings just going to scout things out a lot like, mm, and might get pinned in by those Stalkers. It looks like, yeah, they are going to get picked off in open field, but still, Orphan in fantastic. Ooh, Viking needing a little bit of damage. Orphan in a very nice position, losing that factory to the north, but has three bases. He can really play defensively and win this, more or less, as far as just flat army count. He is about 28 supply ahead. Pretty sure that's not just in Harvesters, so yeah, that is actually a significant count ahead. Uh, could use some more Marauders, could use some more upgrades, definitively, and oh, this is a risky situation. That bunker is empty, he's only got two Marauders to defend his front, and he's moving out with four Medivacs for a counterattack, and this is very tentative, because if Zidi decides to attack right now, more or less, he can crush that natural expansion, and there's nothing to defend it, and it looks like he's spotting it, realizing that is in fact the case, starting to move out to do so, two Marauders panicking, as the, the Zealots are more or less rushing in to, to just stake claim. So this natural definitely going to be taken out. Looks like there are some reinforcements. Actually, the reinforcements didn't need to be cut out because they're non-existent here. And it looks like it's going to be a base trading situation between Zidi and Orphan. Orphan bringing his troops to bear at the, oh, at the main. He's going to catch a lot of this tech, particularly that Temple Archives. That is going to be the juiciest target. Orphan just leaving that command center to the south to buy some time. And Zidi, instead of attacking the main, realizing it tends not to be the best situation to get in base trading. Uh, sort of situation because of the liftoff with Terran is instead going to try to retreat try to buy some time it looks like they're trying to uh, having a little bit of uh, movement trouble but they are going to be able to take out that rowboat or robotics facility a lot of this infrastructure before they they're able to return is that he still has a bank where he might be able to replenish this but in the meantime uh, Orphan should be able to build troops to redefend his natural expansion so Orphan wow uh, striking a large blow Lifting up in a lot of the medevacs and see if these medevacs manage to escape with the majority of this army. They do, in fact, but one of the medevacs gets picked off on exit. And so now, wow, another large army actually being fielded. Still two bases. And it looks like <laughs> that poor sentry. One sentry left out there alone. He was the one who was used to sacrifice. The sacrifice. Uh, Pylon is at location, but not really to, able to warp anything in. Orphan retaking his natural, but now Zidi's really even things up because he's got that 12 o'clock base, he's got the 9 o'clock, well, he's got three bases running more or less except for his main. Uh, same situation, Orphan's main is empty, he's still mining at bottom right though. Uh, the big difference here is Zidi is going up against a large Marauder Marine army uh, that is decently upgraded. does have 1-1 one, one comparatively, does have the combat shield, does have stim pack. Looks like there's still medevacs, looks like there's an observer just kind of attacked to that though. It's going to be able to see that destructible rock open up. Psionic Storm and a Dark Shrine in production in the meantime for Zidi. So he's going to take a big tech switch and try to catch, uh, it looks like, yeah, the 12 o'clock. And that was a nice emergency build before he lost some of his infrastructure. But uh, now, actually, this is a situation where Orphan could probably run up and attack and wipe them out, but doesn't even realize it. Um, has a significant, yeah, 40 supply lead. But again, he can sit back, just macro up, and win this match. Unfortunately, um, the longer he waits, the more uh, the more Templar he's going to be facing out in the field, and that could be absolutely devastating. And here's a Dark Templar speak to the devil. Uh, Dark Templar moving forward in the field. Let's see if we see a commsat, or if there's even going to be any commsat to spare for Orphan. Uh, looking out in the field, 36 there. Oh, not an orbital there yet. 39, so there's going to be at least 10 seconds of Dark Templar 
ravaging this, uh, these units and backing Orphan up. And that's, I like this play from Diddy. It's giving him some map control where he doesn't have a large army to engage this. Um, is catching Orphan without a lot of comsat. Is catching him well aware, uh, well away. And as long as he keeps running... Okay, he loses one Dark Templar, but that's still uh, resources spent. That's one uh, less... Ooh, didn't want to run that additional Dark Templar in there, though. Still more roaming out in the field, so uh, still not, not to worry. And this is definitely going to pin Orphan back, force him to go towards Raven Tech. Looks like he is building Raven right this second while Ziddy takes another expansion to the 12. He's also expanding to the 6 and tries to more or less field an army. Looks like he still has 50 harvesters compared to just 40 and Ziddy might be in trouble actually if he does not continue to... Well, it looks like he is keeping up with this though. He's got the gold expansion up and running. Is not in the best uh, defensive position currently to engage it. Uh, now Ziddy has a lot of high Templar on the field. Has those Dark Templars still running about. He has his Zealots that are very triumphant and running forward. Uh, charge on those units as well. And it looks like Ziddy is more or less taking three-fourths of the map and Orphan actually needs to engage this before cannons go up, before this army is really able to get up in his face actually taking the gold expansion as well and this is extremely risky uh extremely risky raven is going to catch this pylon in construction let's see if he's just going to let it go yeah instead is just going to charge forward and engage uh this large army scv pressing forward the colossus towards the front exactly where it didn't want to be gonna get taken out by the vikings very rapidly but nice side storm bait across a lot of these troops beautiful side storm just just oh wow devastating orphans army and some feedbacks also eating away at the me well actually no no feedbacks yet but some feedbacks could very much eat away against those medevacs and it looks like uh despite this the, the marauder is able to pin back a lot of these troops just on separation it looks like they weren't attacking all the way to the south so still many of them surviving and able to micro a little bit out of it but medevacs devastated orphan losing his standing army ziddy now has some breathing room um interestingly enough and i think uh, did i miss a ground attack because it looks like some harvesters are actually lost somewhere in that fight i almost wonder if they're in that fight Ooh, planetary fortress upgraded this is not where you want to engage city new uh looks like he's going to try to power it down nevertheless at the cost most likely of his army getting pinned in and particularly considering how many uh, how many holdings he has uh, this is a very dangerous situation he does take the planetary fortress out but again no standing army except for a couple of probes running out uh, out in the field we will attack. We will win victory for ire. Even probes getting uh, into the scene here. Really what this calls for is more Dark Templar uh, out in the field. And I think Dark Templar would really, really be key to... Uh, if the Dark Templar and something to pick that raven out of the sky would be very, very helpful. Ziddy has the 6 o'clock base, but is not mining out of it yet. Same thing with the 12 o'clock base is starting to transfer probes uh, right this second. But again, he just does not have much of an army to speak of at all. In fact, if I bring up the units tab, he only has 12 attack units to his name, comparatively. So, uh, still actually large, uh, or I would say small army engagements, despite being very late in this match. Orphan in a lot of trouble. He really needs to expand. Looks like he's got some more marines coming out, some more Marauders coming out. Looks like some Archons actually being morphed somewhere out in the field. Nice pylon kind of coverage uh, to provide some scouting information for Ziddy. And Ziddy, yeah, uh, if he can hold this, he'll end up winning it just through more or less a war of attrition. But unfortunately, he's really spread thin. He's trying to hold way too much territory for his army size, I feel. And it looks like 6 o'clock location is going to get... Ooh, never mind. Is going to be spotted. Let's see if this drops short and if this is just going to be a stim pack. A single stalker moving in. And I want to see some High Templar out here, actually, to size storm the crap out of this. Unfortunately, uh, an incompetent stalker on top of it just spawning there it's just gonna chill watch this die it's like whatever yeah it can yeah, i didn't want that nexus anyway you can go ahead and have it exploding that marine to the north though what a coward it's so like i'm gonna go for the easy target that's ignoring me he's going to pay for it momentarily though believe you me that's what you get lazy stalker uh so six o'clock location has been completely evicted this is going to open it up from orphan if he decides to uh move to this location but this has given ziddy some time to reproduce his army and it looks somewhat scary mostly because the large composition of Psy these are really brutal units psi storm immortals archons uh Zell these are all high impact units charging once again to the gold expansion briefly. Um, need to be a little bit careful. It looks like Ziddy's army, or sorry, Orphan's army, mostly in the six o'clock, just uh, just chilling, hanging out. Looks like a SCV is going to be caught right in open field, though. We're going to see, hey, look, uh, pylons building right here. This is going to be a quick engagement. Ooh, planetary fortress halfway in production. Going to catch the Raven with some feedback. Nice and engage a lot of this Marauder army as it's separated from the Medevac. Wow, and that's what a lot of Psystorm will do. 
Army melts. Ouch. And there's more where that came from. Oh my goodness. Still plenty of High Templar. Um, oh, Planetary Fortress is going to warp in. Let's see if he has enough brutal damage to get it. But a big army coming in to pin once again. It's a similar situation to earlier where Zidi might lose this. Uh, he does have enough to take this out this time, but he might lose his standing army once again. And it looks like he is, in fact, going to lose his standing army. Let's see if he can get some good side storms before he dies. At least catch some of these Marines. He's not going to be able to do so. Run, High Templar, run. But at least slowing Orphan's economy down. And that is extremely critical, particularly at the late stages of the game. He has his gold expansion up. If I bring up the income tab, you can see more or less that Ziddy has twice the income of Orphan currently. And he's pumping out of dual robotics. If he can get some more of those High Templar out, particularly with the uh, Calderon amulet upgrade, which I believe he has. Yes, he does. Uh, maybe even throw out some more Dark Templar. Now that, that Raven's out of the field, he's in a fantastic position to win this match. But it currently is uh, not fielding a very large army, unfortunately. And he's going to get picked off piecemeal. Um, some nice side storms right there, but it is not enough side storms to actually kill many of these units as their two minute backs overhead to heal it almost instantaneously so losing position losing standing army once again this is orphans opportunity to attack forward and retake reclaim control of this match uh, zealots having a lot of difficulty engaging this but some continuation size storms able to wipe that army out because there was not a long enough pause for orphan in between to recharge his units and it looks like he is going to be able to ch uh, chase a couple of these elts to the north more units pumping out for and I don't even know how he has resources anymore. Bottom right base, still mining. Natural, very, very mingling. He needs to hold this gold expansion now. Uh, Ziddy has plenty of resources to spare. He's got that 12 o'clock base, uh, main and natural. Also has his gold expansion up and running. His natural actually still has a lot of minerals on it. It's plus additional two gas. He, and he still hasn't mined out uh, one of the gas at his main. So he's got all sorts of resources to sit on. If he can just keep this sort of behavior up, just wiping these armies up through a lot of size storm, uh, Immortal High Templar, basically high impact units. Orphan's going to be in a lot of trouble, particularly over the long haul, and actually warping in pylons just to blockade, and I like that decision. And more pylons on the field just to kind of scout here. Um, so it looks like Orphan's stuck at 134. Let's see if Ziddy can uh, raise, his, having some trouble macroing, if he can raise that count back up. More medevacs grouping up here, and this is another high impact army, and that is so many immortals with a lot of high templar. Needs to group up a little bit more to engage us here, but fortunately for him, Orphan's army also uh, pretty well separated. Looks like it's standing down to the south, but upgrades, level 3 weapons compared to zero upgrades on the opposite side, that could be the deciding factor for our Orphan in this fight, is just having superior upgrades over the long haul with some very durable units, and it looks like some nice size storm there. Uh, they can't, actually, Zealots getting size storm themselves, and it looks like some retreat size storms in the meantime. Orphan desperately defending this goal expansion, but actually building another command center, presumably to float to the 6 o'clock, and I wouldn't mind even seeing some cannons out here from Zitty just to provide, the, you know, some of the extra annoyance some extra defiance against the expanding Terran, but really needs to move up. Actually, Orphan loading up once again. Oh, with the worst possible time! Fortunately for him, Medivacs do not have energy to get feedback. Uh, well, maybe they do. It looks like they're going to reposition, move out, while Orphan looks like it's going to be, or sorry, Ziddy is just going to charge into this with his Immortals, uh, and it looks like it is going to be another infrastructure trade situation. This could pay off big for Orphan if he can take out a lot of this. Let's see if Ziddy even realizes this is happening and can warp some units in. He has plenty of a bank to defend this. He can get some High Templar out, but it looks like the Immortals still rallied to that natural. Uh, just don't know what's going on. I'm going to re-engage at this gold, but again, this really hurts Ziddy because he does not have it, he does not have an infrastructure rebuild. Now warping in some High Templar, is it enough, and will he be able to size storm at the proper position? It looks like Asso drawing uh, some of those troops back, so not really getting a lot of bang for his buck here. He's losing all of his main, and is really not uh, is really not doing counter damage to Orphan at all. Some nice size storms. Looks like that Immortal is going to be a hold to the low ground, but all of the gateways have been wiped out. This is a big opening for Orphan if he can run out and really capitalize and try to press ahead as much as possible because Ziddy is going to have to rebuild everything. He does have a lot of resources to do so, but nevertheless, it's going to be a while before he has a standing army to once again oppose Orphan. Uh, Orphan still, though, only running off this gold expansion actually as a protective planetary fortress. Building there, more marines and marauders moving in. Uh, they're going to be able to catch the Twilight Council tech, but not a lot else. And between that and the stim pack, actually, that cannon getting a lot of kills. Looks like some medevacs going to be able to back off in the meantime, but it looks like I'll still the Immortals reign. Archon barely left alive. And some battle probes up in there. 12 o'clock location, extremely vulnerable. Uh, yeah, Ziddy rebuilding everything now to the 12. And another large army for Orphan. And this shows you macro matters. 
uh, matters a lot. And another Dark Shrine being built for whatever reason. Perhaps Sidi didn't realize that he actually did not lose his Dark Shrine in that previous engagement. Yeah, he's building it right there. Um, but that does lead you to believe we might see some Dark Templar, which would be awesome. So level Terran sh uh, ship plating actually going up, perhaps to provide some additional support to these medevacs, make them a little bit more durable in the long run. But what Orphan needs to think about doing right this second is claiming territory to the 6 o'clock specifically uh, to get his economy re-rolling because his gold base almost completely mined out. Uh, once Ziddy has this up and once he has, uh, he's just running off such a large bank, he's going to be able to produce a large army very, very rapidly. Orphan starting to press forward. Mm. Up to the gold base, so he might be able to wipe out a little bit of infrastructure here if he just hurries up. Uh, is, gonna, is definitely going to be able to take out this base, but Ziddy can sacrifice this without too much trouble. Looks like he's going to plan to engage and, oh, going to actually try to trap the army in. Between that, some Psy Storm and some Immortals could actually wipe out a lot of this army. He needs to get those Psy Storms closer together, though, and oh, there it is! Oh my goodness, Orphan losing everything. The Immortals still standing and everything. Wow, look at just the carnage. The horror the horror but orphan still with another troop moving out without medevac support command center going to try to float to the six it's going to find a big old pylon in the way ziddy has uh looks like seven gates to the north up and running and perhaps more i hope more to come he's running a huge bank if he just builds units at this stage he's more or less got this match uh because orphan cannot continue with this uh, continue just exchanging battles like this looks like archon is going to get picked off on the front maybe ooh, more psy storm keep in mind no medevac to heal in between these fights currently looks like there is a meta one medevac in production the command center just going to float there there are it looks like there are more gateways to the south so ziddy could very very quickly and it looks like he's realizing this is the strong engagement point uh, warping and zealots, interestingly enough, would have liked to see some more high templar, especially considering how much uh, gas he has in the bank. But it looks like he's got another engagement point here to the south. It's going to try to pincer the rest of Orphan's army in, and Orphan at extreme risk here at the six o'clock is going to try to move up right into some zealots. Uh, looks like the zealots are going to back off. That would have actually been a nice occasion to just engage. And it looks like some reinforcements for Orphan getting cut off. Still, the high templar moving in, side storming up the ramp. Still no medevac support. Oh man, that is a ton of side storm hits. So those units are very, very soft. More uh, climbing in. It looks like Orphan's going to lose the 6 o'clock base. He has to GG at this point. He cannot continue with this fight. Even if he takes out this 6 o'clock, Ziddy still has plenty of standing organization to work with. But no pylon to resupport these units at a distance. Uh, but still, Marauders, very, very soft, very weak. Every unit here is in the red, completely wiped out. Never mind, they're completely wiped out. So it looks like Ziddy still holds the six. Orphan uh, is more or less out of resources. It looks like he has 21 resources to his name and a lot of idle SCVs currently. And in the meantime, Ziddy has absolute map control. He's got a, a sizable force, not, a, not what I would call huge, but sizable. He's got plenty of infrastructure, has the 12 o'clock, has the 12 o'clock natural, still has the gold expansion, which he can mine out of. But another task force moving up. SCVs coming off the line to try to attack. It looks like a medevac, two medevacs, and just a skeleton crew going to try to to get something accomplished. Oh, Ziddy, don't do it, though. Don't attack into the Planetary Fortress. You don't need to. Uh, more High Templar warping in, more Zealots warping in to take care of these SCV on the low ground. Looks like uh, a lot of units actually warping in the north. Ziddy's retreating to the north. Is that Well, I should say reinforcing to the north would be a better way to put that. Looking for a feedback on those medevacs, but there are no High Templar nearby. It's still unloading. There's a feedback. Uh, and units very cautiously being offloaded with very uh, low health, but that's going to make those medevacs a, a lot less effective. Looks like they're still trying to travel their way around. But again, this is kind of the last hurrah for Orphan. Zealots moving to the north. Looks like they are going to be able to clear out some of the oof, uh, some of the units that are remaining. Medevac uh, taken out otherwise, an Orphan has to GG. So well fought by both players. <laughs> GFG, that's right. Uh, but Ziddy reigns supreme. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.